So uh, we are, you are wearing the title of our sermon. That's why you have this sticker on. It's called Fragile. Amen. And so we're going to continue the conversation that we had last week. Okay. We talking about this is who we are. We're in a season where God is trying to define us with who he has called us to be and what he has called us to do. And in order for us to properly be able to function in the world and function in the community, we need to know who we are. And so last week we learned that we were light carriers. Amen. Anybody glad to know that you're a light carrier? And so we're going right back into 2 Corinthians chapter 4, um, starting at verse 7, okay? And the scripture reads like this. Father, speak to us now with clarity, with wisdom. God, we crucify all flesh, no flesh, show glory in your presence. We want your presence to be with us and to lead us and to guide us. Lord, we want to be able to actively pursue your purpose for our life. We hide ourselves behind the cross, speak very clearly. In this moment, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. So the scripture reads, it says, we now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God and not from ourselves. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but we are not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Through sufferings, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. Yes, we live in under constant danger of death because we serve Jesus. So that the life of Jesus will be evident in our dying bodies, we live in the face of death, but this has resulted in eternal life for you. But we continue to preach because we have the same kind of faith that the psalmist had when he said, I believe in God, so I speak. So last week, we established that we are light carriers. We are full of the understanding that we carry the light of God. We have God's power working within us. I want you to point to yourself, say, God's power is working in me. And this is the light of God. It is a great treasure. But the truth is, it has been put in fragile jars. And the reality is us being fragile is something that we shy away from. Um, we, we, we don't want to identify with things that may make us seem weak and make us seem vulnerable. But the Bible says that we contain a, a great pleasure, but a great treasure, the light of God. It says, but we ourselves are fragile. That's the Bible. And, you know... For a short period of time, I used to work at FedEx, okay? I used to be a courier for FedEx Express. And when I would go to work, there were packages that they would put these labels on. And there were special uh, uh, recommendations and special procedures that had to be adhered to when you were handling something fragile. There are oftentimes, depending on the largeness of the case, you had to go and you had to get assistance. But there was specialized training that we had to do for something called dangerous goods and fragile items. And so we had to be trained on how to handle these items. And so it made an indication that what was in this item was valuable. But the container was fragile. And our lives are just like those packages. That what they carry is very, very special and they have a, a, a delicate nature about them. But the thing is, you got to be trained on how to handle them. And the truth of the matter is, we shy away from a, a, a identifying with our fragile nature because we have allowed people to mishandle us. Let me tell you something, Renovation. You cannot allow people that do not have the training, 
that do not have the desire or the intentionality to handle your life. You can't just be handled by anybody. You can't just be in relationship with anybody. You can't give everything and everybody access to you because if they do not have the wisdom and the understanding of how to handle you, they're going to damage who you are. That's why you got to know about your nature. You have to understand that you are fragile, but you're valuable. Anybody ever seen a piece of china? And it sits up in a display case. And they only bring it out on special occasions. There are certain ways my, my, my mother had, uh, and my grandmother, she had a brass silverware that we were only set out on Thanksgiving. And you could not put this silverware in the dishwasher. There was a solution that she had that we had to wash this silverware by hand. And if, if, if the forts had a feeling, and if they had emotion, they would feel slighted. Because every other day, we ate off of plastic plates, and we used plastic forks. And so, in the drawer, you would see, and she kept them in a nice container. It was, it was in that drawer, that, 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 that um, a silverware drawer, where she kept the brass stuff. It had like a little velveteen um, little rope in there. And it was like, it, and so they sat in this pretty thing. And every day that we went in the drawer, we skipped over the brass, over the good stuff, and we got something that was plastic. And oftentimes, when we see other people being used more than we do, We'll get in our feelings because we feel like people are overlooking us and ignoring us. And if we don't understand who we are, we will not understand that we are being preserved because we're fragile and there's a special occasion that God has set forth for your life. Don't be trying to lower your standards to be like plastic when God has called you brass. Stop trying to make yourself be more agreeable with people because you are afraid of rejection and abandonment. You are not being rejected or abandoned. You are being preserved. And people have to know how to handle you. They got to handle you with care. We need to be trained on how to deal with fragile people and fragile realities. Because if we mishandle our fragileness, we will cause damage to the purpose of God in our life. And each and every one of you are called for a specific purpose that heaven has for you. So don't be afraid to be fragile. Don't be afraid of who it is that you are. Because it causes awareness. See, if you walk around with this, with this sticker on, it's going to cause people to pay attention to you. It's like, I know when some of you walked in here, it was like, why does she have on a sticker that says fragile handle with care? It was a label that made somebody stop and ask you a question. Do you realize that the fragile nature of some of the situations and circumstances that you have gone through in your life are supposed to cause people to stop and ask you a question? And the answer to that question is Jesus did. That's the answer. And so we must understand the nature of who we are. And so the scripture says we now have this light shining in our, in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God and not from ourselves. Let me tell you something. Don't get great and grand. Sometimes when we start, I know I told everybody to go and shine last week, let your light shine and start getting flossy and glossy and looking cute and all of that stuff that you want to do. But if you do not handle your nature, you will end up walking and thinking that the shine upon your life has something to do with you. You are not where you are because you are so wonderful. It's the God in you that is causing you to shine. Come on here, somebody. The Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags. And so we need to be reminded of our fragile nature so that we'll walk in humility.
We need to be humble. Yes, we're called to be great. Yes, we're called to shine. Yes, we're called to illuminate darkness. Yes, we are called to do great exploits. Yes, you are gifted. Yes, you are talented. And yes, y'all are still cute. Because I don't serve a church with no ugly people. We are beautiful in God's eyes, but we need to walk in humility because the power that we have is not from ourselves. Uh, when we start walking in arrogance and start walking like we are so great and so mighty and so everything, we will forget and we will deny God's power and our flesh will be exposed and people will miss heaven. Have you, let's have a conversation. How many times have you all gone to church and because of how the people acted from the pulpit caused you to walk away? Because you've seen a pastor and they preach well. You met a singer and they sung well, but when you encountered them, they were so puffed up in their own arrogance that it left a distaste in your mouth. Come on, let's have a, we're going to have a conversation at Renovation. You ever, look, you ever had a mentor that you looked up to, somebody in your field of work, and you, you know, paid to go to a conference or you wanted to meet them, and when you met them, it was just like, well, I regret this. <laughs> it's because they have forgotten that the power that they have comes from God and not themselves. We are fragile, we are fragile, and so we need to handle our fragile nature and identify with who we are. And you can't afraid, be afraid to be fragile. Fragile literally means something that is easily broken or destroyed. But the good thing about being fragile is, and the good thing about being able to be broken, is Psalms 51 tells us that the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a contrite heart. We shy away from being broken, but being broken causes God to get our attention. Being broken causes God to show up on our behalf. The Bible says we have not a high priest that cannot be touched by the feelings of our infirmities. That means when stuff goes wrong in your life, God pays attention to it. The broken areas of your life does not make God shy away from you. It makes him draw close. He says he is married to the backslider. So that means that the fragile moments where you fall back into the stuff that you have no business being in, but it's our nature to do it anyway, God says that I'm married to you there. Not when you look your most beautiful, but in your most ugly moments. We're fragile. And as much as we want to do the right thing, as much as we want to be strong, as much as we want to be mighty, as much as we want to be invincible, we are fragile. God made us that way for a reason. He made us that way so that when we are weak, he is strong. So that we don't have to rely on our own strength. I want us to stop feeling like we got to be so strong and mighty all by ourselves. That's a trap. That's why many of us are weighed down with stress and anxiety because we're trying to be superhuman when God's trying to show us how to be supernatural. When you're weak, you raise a hallelujah and God will show up with your strength. When you're in the midst of temptation and you're about to give in, you raise a hallelujah and God will show up with a way out. When you're feeling overwhelmed by life, you raise a hallelujah and God will show up. You don't have to be strong all by yourself. You are not the sacrificial lamb for your whole family. That's Jesus. And because we are fragile and we don't know who we are, we start carrying other people's burdens. We start carrying stuff and we start breaking underneath of the pressure. And God says, take my yoke because my yoke is easy. You can't carry everything for everybody because that's not who God called you to be. You're fragile. And there's nothing wrong with that, especially as a man. A man, we don't like to be vulnerable. We don't like to be sensitive. But let me tell you something. Men are very sensitive. We just navigate our emotions by the necessity of what we need to do. My emotions ain't going to stop. What, if, I, if I'm angry and I'm hungry, guess what? I'm going to go to work so I can make some money to eat. 
But we take stuff personally and we shy away. But God said his strength is made perfect in our weakness. And so Paul says, so I boast in my weakness. When we shy away from being fragile, we deny God's ability to operate in our life. God wants to show up in your life being strong and mighty. But if you keep trying to pretend that you're strong and mighty, you tell God that you don't need him. If you keep trying to act like you have it all together and you can do it all by yourself and you have all the intelligence and all of the answers and all the strategies and you are super woman and super man, you deny God's ability to show up in your life and be your father and rescue you. We're fragile. We're fragile. We are fragile and that's okay. Now, as we're learning who we are, we understand that there is a power that works in our life that is not from us. And so you have to, number one, realize who you are and realize who you're called to. You're not called to everybody. You're not called to everything. Even as much as we want to do in the community, everything we're not graced to do. We have to do what Holy Spirit instructs us to do to meet the needs that we are supposed to meet. We can't do it all because we're fragile, and that's okay. But if we do our part, we will make a dynamic impact that will change people's lives forever. And you can't be overwhelmed that you cannot solve all the world's problem. You cannot carry everything. And we need to understand that there are some people that have no desire in learning on how to handle us. You, my grandmother used to tell me something all the time. I would go to a situation. I was like, why are this person acting this way? Why are they acting like that? Why are they doing it? Why are they acting like that? And my grandmother said, baby, they not acting. <laughs> they not acting. They showing you who they are. And you need to raise your eyes so you can see what they show you. And we keep trying to beg people to be in our lives and beg people to treat us right and beg people to do the right thing. And sometimes it's not going to happen because they're not interested in learning how to deal with something that's fragile and valuable. You are valuable even though you're fragile. You are valuable even though you have issues. You are valuable even though you have a, a, a shameful moments in your life. You are valuable even though there is stuff that has happened to you that you don't want anybody to know. It does not change the value of who God has created you to be. And the people that are really interested in learning how to treat you and learning how to love you will do what needs to be done to do it the right way. Let's jump back into the text. I don't want to fail you in, in, in the reality of who we really are. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, it says, We now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile jars of clay containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is, is from God and not ourselves. Now listen to this. I want you to understand that because we are fragile and full of great, God's great power, we're going to go through some stuff. The scripture says we are pressed on every side by troubles. But the good news is we are not crushed. Anybody ever been in a season in your life where you feel like you can't take any more? And then all of a sudden more shows up? It's like, I, listen, I'm carrying this and I'm carrying that and I got this. And then all of a sudden and somebody comes and drops something else in your hand and you like... I can't take any more. That's what it means to be pressed on every side when your family is acting crazy and your job is acting crazy and the people at church are acting funny and you got issues going on in your health and you got issues going on. You're pressed on every side. But the scripture says that we are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed. You ever been in a season and you've been just confused like what is going on? Why? Why? Why is this happening? This does not make any sense. I remember there was one time in my life where uh, uh, um, in, in a month's span, we had two family members die on the same day. 
if within the month span. Like we had one day my uncle died and my wife's aunt died and then the next month my cousin died and so did my wife's cousin die. And then three months later her mother died and her grandmother died all on the same day. And so I was going through a season where I was and then in the midst of that I was planning her cousin's funeral and while I was planning her cousin's funeral my brother died. And I was just like God what is going on? It was perplexing. But the Bible says we are perplexed, but we are not driven to despair. You want to know what I did in that season? I raised a hallelujah. Because I realized that my hope and my help was coming from God. And so in the midst of that, I preached and I sang and I ministered to my family. And I went to my therapist with my tears and my struggles. And I kept raising a hallelujah. And people kept asking me, Mark, how are you going on? It's because I was perplexed, but I was not in despair. Because I was not grieving as somebody that did not have any hope. I, I knew where my mother was. I knew where my brother was. I knew where my grandmother was was. I knew where my aunt was. I knew where my uncle was. I knew that they had gained their wings and were in heaven doing something that I was practicing for on earth. And so even though my heart was broken and even though it was a lot, I was not in despair because I had learned how to lift my hands and understand that yes, I'm fragile. I'm going to cry through this. I'm going to weep through this. Some days I'm going to feel depressed about this because I'm fragile. Some days I'm not going to feel like getting out of bed, but I will because I'll raise a hallelujah and God will take my fragile nature and give me strength we're fragile we go through human experiences and that's okay you are not a machine you are not a robot you are supposed to feel and supposed to go through pressure. And as you read more in the scripture, you will learn that we will go through suffering just because we name the name of Jesus. But the good news I want you to understand, it says that we are hunted down but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but the scripture says we will never be destroyed. We will never be destroyed. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I, I want you to understand that no matter how much and no matter the heaviness of the season that you may go through, you will never be destroyed. People will hunt you down. People will go on. There was this time. I, again, we're going to have a conversation. I believe in talking in truth. I'm going to come down. I'm going to come down. All right. There was this time I was on staff at a church. And... um Sorry, these little funny looking pants. I'm not trying to have a David dance kind of worship this morning. You know, where David danced out of his clothes and trying to keep my clothes on, you know. Um, and I was going through a season and there was a lady who wrote a letter to the board of the church that was complete and total lies. Like, I was like, and so they brought me into the office and I was reading this letter and I was like, well, who is this about? Why y'all bring me in here? They said, it's about you. I said, what? I mean, and she went on a witch hunt. And I had to go back to the scriptures, and the Bible says that we are hunted down, but the other part says we are never abandoned. And so I said, well, this is complete and total chaos. All I'm in here doing is preaching and singing to Jesus and speaking to people and being nice. And she's telling people that I'm mean and I'm controlling and I tried to cut somebody out. I was just like, no, I didn't. I said, when did this happen? And I started raising a hallelujah. I started reading Psalms 91. And I started saying that one of us can uh, uh, put a thousand to flight, but two of us can send the legions fleeing. I started naming and declaiming, and I started calling my wife and calling my prayer partners. I said, I don't know what's going on. And they were, this, because of this letter, they tried to fire me three weeks before my wife gave birth to my first child. I said, this is crazy. I was hunted down. But guess what happened? I got a raise. Because God never abandons you. And so we can't. I was broken hearted. Because yes. I love people. I lo when I tell you I live my life to make sure people feel loved. Yes. 
And I was just like, and this lady I talk to every week. Served with her, prayed for her, gave her some of my Tootsie Rolls out of my office. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't even know we wasn't friends. But when you name the name of Christ, persecution will come against you. The scripture says you are hunted down and you are perplexed. You will go through perplexing situations. And I was trying to figure out, well, what did I do? How did we get here? I went to her. I was like, well, what, what, ha like, what did I do? How did I offend you? I apologize if I offend you. And she had no answer. Because sometimes it is nothing that you have done. You go through situations with your friends and your family and people start acting funny and people, your co-workers start shifting on you and people and your neighbors that you was cool with and then you shovel out your parking lot and your parking spot and then they come and move your cone and they park in your parking lot in the snow and you trying to figure out what did I do? You didn't do anything. It was just because there's a light shining in you and the enemy wants to dim that light. And he wants you to be so upset and so frustrated and so bothered and so annoyed that you stop being who God has called you to be and respond to that confusion. He wants you fighting. He wants you arguing. He wants you to be confused. He wants you to be overwhelmed. But you have to understand that you will never be destroyed. You may be fragile, but you're indestructible. You may be fragile, but you will never die. You will never be taken down. No matter what the enemy tries to do to you, you will stand up and you will always be victorious. The scripture says that overwhelming victory is our portion through Jesus Christ. You're fragile, but you're indestructible. You're fragile but you're unmovable. It may feel like it is breaking you. It may feel like it is crushing you. It may feel like it is tormenting you, but you are going to come out like pure gold. Because the power of God that is working in you. And so how many fragile people do I have in here this morning? I know when you walked in here this morning, it was like, I don't want to wear nothing that says fragile. But now you can rejoice because when God sees this sign, it means that he's sending his angels to back you up. When God sees this sign, it means that heaven is moving on your behalf. When God sees this sign, he knows that there is somebody that I got to show up for and I protect. It's just like if my daughter screams a certain way, baby, I come out running. I say, who messed with daddy's baby? And that's how God shows up for you. When you say, God, Father, I'm weak. Father, I'm going through. Father, I'm overwhelmed. God shows up and says, who's messing with my child? That's my daughter right there. That's my son right there. And I'm going to defend them to the very end. Let me tell you something. I don't care if my child is wrong as rain. You better not lay a hand on them. Because I will deal with them privately and God will deal with us privately. But when the enemy tries to accuse you, the blood of Jesus covers you and God says, not that one. Not that one. The enemy wants to mess with you. He's going to mess with you. Depression is going to try and visit you. Anxiety is going to try to overwhelm you. Perversion and fear and doubt and low self-esteem and racism and sexism and hatred is going to come and visit you. And poverty is going to try to rampage your life and your finance. But because of who we are in Christ, we'll never be destroyed because God is going to show up and rescue you. You will never, when I say hallelujah, you have won the victory. The victory is already won for us, renovation. All we got to do is ride the wave of God's glory. We just got to go through the hills and the valleys. Because even though I'm fragile, I'll never be destroyed. Now, just like I had to go through training at FedEx, we need to be trained on how to deal with one another. One of the reasons that we have these stickers on is because it's a reminder that I have to handle you with care. I may not know what you went through this week, and so when you encounter me, you need to encounter God's love and not my problems. Because I don't want to damage you. 
because I mishandle you. This is a distribution center of God's greatest champions. And so when we walk through the door, we need to handle each other with care. We need to love on one another. The Bible says a soft answer turns away wrath. We need to understand that even though they may look strong, that they're fragile. And I need to handle them with love and handle them with patience and handle them with compassion and handle them with consideration because just like I'm fragile, they're fragile too. And if we do that, then people will feel safe about being real about what they're going through. We can take the mask off when we deal with the truth that we are fragile. Sometimes we put on masks and facades. Sometimes Sunday morning becomes the greatest stage play on earth. And God doesn't want it to be that way. He wants us to be real. He says, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And the truth, like I told you last week, can be ugly. But guess what? God can handle our ugly truth.